varieties that we have that have been recently released or things that we have in the program that we're considering. Um, the first one down there would be a number that ends in 1124. That's an extremely early line with good blast resistance. It's a half indica. Um, it did very well in Louisiana Uni Uniform Regional Nursery this year, and we think that it has some really good yield potential, and so that's something that we're looking at. This, just for your benefit, was planted on June 6th emerged about June 7th. We had to replant because of some herbicide problems earlier. And the next one that we've released is Templeton. Templeton is a uh, mid-season, long grain, good blast resistance. It has blast resistance to the common races and it has moderate to resistance to race to IE1K, which was our problem on the Banks variety, which was released a few years ago. Um, Banks came from a back cross program and we had one gene in it. This comes from a traditional crossing program. It has Drew and Katie and a whole bunch of star bonnet, a bunch of different things, and it also has resistance to the IE1K. So that's a benefit of that variety. It has good yield potential, yields pretty much with wells in the program. Um, good milling, it's uh, kernel size, more like that of Drew. We also have Taggart, which is next to it. Taggart is another release from the program. It's got that good high yield of Francis and Wells. It has a large kernel size. We got a lot of requests for a larger kernel for the parboil industry, and this particular line has a very large kernel for the parboil industry, but it also mills pretty well, so it's not a bad large kernel rice variety. Um, both of those are moderately susceptible to sheep bite. They're taller, just like you would expect. They have pretty good lodging resistance. They don't tend to lodge really easily. Next to that is 1076, and it, in the program that we've had it in, shows real good lodging resistance. Even in bad situations, doesn't tend to go down, even though it's tall. Um, it's had very good yield potential. Um, we're looking at that as a potential for something for the future. We don't know yet. We're still collecting data. Um, it's going to be like the type of, like the tiger, susceptible to blast, but they're going to have some field resistance. They're not going to be like, they're going to be more like wells. You're going to be able to manage them if you can manage your flood. Um, most of our varieties, if you can manage your flood and can maintain a flood, you won't have a problem, but there are some people that if you plant them on a sandy soil, especially Francis, you're probably going to have problems. And this year was one of those years it jumped up to bite some people. I think they have a lot of uh, blast in Francis where they had them on sandy soils and they can't maintain the water and that's just exactly what we would expect. Um, behind me of course are the Cybonic um, from Arkansas, Chenier and Catahoula which are two out of Louisiana, they've been out a while. And then we have 1030 which is a semi-dwarf um, out of James program that looks very good. It also has very good yield potential. I think it has good blast resistance, good milling. So that's one we're also looking at for the future. And then that's another long grain next to it. It's not as far along in the program, has good milling, looks good for the future. Bowman, of course, came out of Mississippi. There's been some problem with blast on Bowman this year in certain plots in different places. So that may be a problem for that variety. Jupiter, Neptune. Jupiter, of course, has had some blast. Neptune's had a little bit that they found around the state. And then we get down to some clear fields down there. Um, the CL151 is out of Louisiana, and it's a high yielding, looks like a good clear field, but it has a blast problem, so you need to be able to manage your water if you're going to grow that variety. Next to that is CL142AR, that's a new release out of Arkansas. It's a little early, it's an earlier line, um, has very good yield potential, he yields with Francis and Wells in the Arkansas Performance Trials. It has a big kernel like Tigert, only this one you're going to want to get out of the field on time. It's not going to hold up like the Tigert might. Um, it's going to be like wells. It's going to tend to drop if the conditions are bad. But it does have very good yield potential and it milled very well last year. We didn't have a problem. The year before we did have some problems and it dropped like a rock in a few places down into the 40s just like the wells variety. And next to that is CL181AR. It's a semi-dwarf. The 142AR is taller like the Francis and Wells, lodging similar to Francis. Um, the CL181 is the semi-dwarf. It's going to be more susceptible to sheep blight, where the CL142 is moderately susceptible to sheep blight. This is going to be very susceptible, but maybe not quite as bad as some of the other clear fields have been to sheep blight, according to Dr. Cartwright. And he says both of those are, of course, blast susceptible in our nurseries, but they tend to have pretty good field tolerance, so 
managing water may be easier on those than on the 151 because they have a little bit more field tolerance than the 151. And uh, the 181 has also very good milling yield and has a kernel size pretty similar to that of the CL161 variety. And the CL181 is from Francis and Clearfield 161 and the 142 has AR has Wells, Clearfield, and Francis for parents. The bottom one down there, of course, is the Jess, which is the new re release that we, we talked about that came out of Chris, with Chris and uh, Dr. Rutger, Dr. Darren and Dr. Rutger's release. It's a jasmine variety, and it looks pretty interesting, and it's done pretty well in the test for the last few years. Does anybody have any questions?